Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I see what most people cannot see and I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can actually be lonely. You can feel like more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens, the world looks different, and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. Richard is a consultant and a coach who's worked in tech for 20 years. He works with fast moving business leaders who love complexity. And he asks me, where do I find these kind of interesting people that I love to work with? Well, I tell him there are two answers to that question. Number one is, you can look for them and find the communities they hang out in. And number two is you can create the communities that they hang out in. And it's easier than you think. There's a moment at the end of the coaching where he goes, Hmm. And that's the moment I know we're there. That's the moment when he's had his insight. Next, he gets in his head a little bit about how am I going to make this happen? And I have to just calm him down. But it was the moment he knew, oh, yeah, I want to do this. The insight came and we're there. That's why I love to coach around insight. The moment I have an insight, their world changes. Enjoy the episode. Hi, Richard. Hi, Rich. I am glad you're here with me. You're a member of Project Kairos, which means this is my community of people who've done all sorts of extraordinary things before coaching. And now they want to take their coaching practice to the next level. And I'm honored that you said yes to come on and we'll play. And how can I help you today? Yeah. Well, you can go all sorts of directions, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think the thing um, right now, I'm feeling that my practice is, is taking off. You know, I'm getting momentum. Um, takes a while, right? To start with, you, you know, you do a lot of, I call it shoe leather marketing, right? You're just getting out there, meeting people, connecting. Um, so there's a certain sense of momentum. Um, and I'm just thinking, and I'm, so I've really got confident now in partially due to Project Kairos, right? And actually, um, that I, I do good coaching, right? I do great consulting and it makes an impact. Mm. And so, and I'm really aware, yeah, I can be in, these rooms that I wanted to be in, right? I can be in, you know, the executive suite, which is where I've actually spent a lot of my time anyway, but in, yeah. in this slightly different role, I can be there. Um, so the, I guess the question that comes to my mind right now is like, how do I get in, how do I spend more time in the right circles, right? It's already well meeting somebody at the school gate or, um, you know, a friend that I've known for years and asking who they know and that kind of thing. But it, I kind of think there must be, places where my kind of clients hang out or um yeah rooms where i need to be the i'll be the dumbest person in the room and that'd be a good place to be right and i'm just not sure do i need to, you know should i be looking for those places or do they exist or how do i find them i think there are two answers to that question it's a great question um i love that your business is beginning to fly and now it's time to get into more interesting rooms uh one is to find them and the other is to create them and both are interesting and valuable to have a look at. Uh, which one comes to mind first? We'll do them both. Well, I've, um, I've tried to create some. I've, I've like tried various things, various stages. Um, I don't think I've had a lot of success in that, if I'm honest. I've done some things. You know, I run an a occasional thing here in Paris, um, invite people along. Sometimes I get a bunch of people sometimes not that many, but it's still fun. Uh, but they're normally people who are, you know, in my network or people who have, you know, potential clients or current clients or whatever. So it's great. Um, 
so I'm kind of, I can create rooms and they're not necessarily as big as I might want them to be, but it doesn't feel that I'm kind of getting the next level, um, uh, yeah, a different set of people, I suppose, in those that okay. people I already know. Well, let's, let's have a look at that. It, you told me a minute ago that what's happened in your coaching practice, it was, it's like push starting a car when your friend says, hey, can you help us? And four of you get behind it, you're pushing and it's very slow because there's a lot of inertia and then it gets momentum and it starts to move faster and faster and then you almost fall over because the engine kicks in and it takes off. And it's mm. been happening with your business. You've felt this momentum beginning to build and it can feel really slow at the beginning. Mm. So I, I put it to you, it's the same game for creating communities. You've been doing it a little bit. You've been practicing with some of the clients and so on. And sometimes it ha happens. There's a lot of people, sometimes not so many people. It's just a longer term game than you think. If mm. you're in it for the long haul, then you can relax about those tiny moments. Say, like, okay, well, these are just experiments. This is why I call 4PC my 25 year game. And we're only five years in. So I, I'm, I'm excited about what could happen in year seven, let alone year 10, year 15. Yeah. So I wonder what would happen if you raised the bar a little bit. If you said this was a, a C-suite dinner or a C-suite meeting, it's for the very high level executives you'd love to spend time with. And, and in the first couple of times you might do it, there might only be two people there. But if you do something really fun and interesting and unorthodox with them and say, hey, come back again, bring a friend, bring a colleague, you'd be surprised how that would build over time. And how does that one land, first of all? Mm. Yeah. Um, it, on one hand, it's, re it's really exciting on one hand. <laughs> and on the other hand, it's like, it's going to be so much work to get all these busy people to actually lock in on, you know, I'm, I'm, I can imagine I have like three of them, right? And then like two of them would drop out the day before because they've got a emergent thing. So, um, and I know that I have a bit of a tendency to kind of always look for the shortcut, right? And so anything that looks like it's a lot of work that in the end might not create something I might shy away from, right? Or I've, I've tried things, right? Remember early on in Project Kairos, I tried to organize a, a dinner um, and that didn't quite, take off the way I expected, shall we say. Tell so me I more. Tried to, well, um, yeah, I, tried, I basically said, let's put together a dinner with four extraordinary um, uh, leaders. Um, and yeah, I actually played a pretty high game. I like said, you know, you're gonna have to like pay to come along, you know, it's just, you know, skin in the game. Yeah. Um, and started to ask around about, you know, who would be the kind of incredible people that should be at this dinner. And I got some, you know, I got, some names and I probably could have got more, but I think I was just finding that it was just hard to lock in even on a date with the few people that I'd already got some interest from. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps that's just me not pushing through uh, and, and getting stuck in. Probably. <laughs> Cause I can't promise how many will come to the first one or to the second. Mm. But if you know that on the third Thursday of the month or four times in 2020, there's a dinner, that you're mm. filling mm. and it's a minimum of four, maximum of six. And mm. those dates are on the calendar. And then when you're in conversation, you call out for someone, a real powerful commitment, whether it's they're putting some money down up front or something that will have them be committed to this. I think you'd be surprised at what will happen if you start to fill into the future. If it's just one and you feel a bit of pushback, there's a part of you that's going to go, ah, oh, you know what? It's a bit of hard work right now. Two people have said, no, that feels challenging and you'll pull back. That's why most people don't launch a coaching practice because it's easy for me to say, yes lives in the land of no. Uh, the more no's you get, the more yes is gonna get. But you get four no's in a row and that feels overwhelming. You get seven in a row and, and you quit. Hmm. Except we know that if you're willing to be in it for the long haul and you are, you are committed to building this coaching and consulting practice, the no's are just part of the game. Sometimes there's a bunch in a row, hmm. sometimes there's, there's a bunch of yeses in a row. It's the same with this kind of thing around creating community. The yeah. first ever event that I created was myself and Steve Chandler. And we had 30 people in a room with us. We got 15 of them there each by serving them one conversation at a time to get them in an event with us. I now have a community of 150 people who show up at a time. And, and I, I'm not coaching people to get them to come to that, that event. But that's because I spent... 10 years almost building communities, serving people, creating value. I'm just in it for the long haul. Mm. Yeah. I think that idea of, um, 
of having four dates stay uh, is, uh, I don't know why, but that sounds like that's, that would work or that would be good. I think that somehow, well, let me yeah, because suddenly, it's suddenly, because people are not, can't commit necessarily like to next week, right? But sometime out, yeah. they could, and it's then a choice. It's like, well, you know, you either do it now or you don't do it. Filling into That's the future. Choice. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've ever done an assessment called Colby. Colby yeah. shows you how you operate in the world. So I'm really low on something called follow through. Mm. Uh, my, my profile is three, four, nine, two. Four is really low on follow through. That's not good or bad. It just means yeah. I am a ni- I'm not the guy who should ever do scheduling, put things on calendars, be sending emails to people. If I order a package from Amazon and they send the wrong thing, it's, it's going to secretly, so my wife doesn't notice, go in the trash because I'm never going to be the guy to go to the post office and try and mail it back. It's just not who I am. Yeah. I'm so, a 4492, so I get, I get right, you. Yeah, okay, so, so okay. I hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Almost the same profile. So, so uh, you find a way to set this up so you're not handling logistics. You don't, you're, it's never going to happen if you have to handle logistics. Yeah. Whether that's uh, some kind of personal assistant, maybe your partner's good at that stuff and you're not, whatever it is, it's got to not involve logistics. That's what's going to be the barrier to entry for you. It's not about them. It's, oh my God, I had to go back and forth on email three times to get a date. And that's just with one person. You'd be overwhelmed. It will never happen. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, perhaps I can just find three people who are kind of up for it and then say, right, well, we'll nail down a date that you can all do. And that yeah. can be the start of the thing. And yeah. I do have an assistant who's great at that. So that's, uh, make sure your assistant handles that stuff. You should not be doing that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So what hmm. do we say? Uh, uh, you could either create the community or find the community. Let's talk about finding the community. Where hmm. do you find this community? Well, tell me more about your people. What kind of, you said executives. What do you mean by executives? Yeah. So, well, CEOs. so, you know, my background's uh, in, in tech. I spent 20, you know, 20 years in tech. And I, I find that my customers, they're not always in tech, but they're often in complex, fast-moving industries, right? They tend to love complexity. They tend to... Um, uh, um, so they tend to be running large, you know, reasonable size organizations. They're not always massive, right? One of my clients got, you know, an organization of 30 people, right? Other ones got hundreds, right? Or thousands. But uh, they'll, so they'll, they'll tend to be dealing with this intersection of strategy and people um, uh, in this fast moving kind of technology world. And then I think the people that actually I resonate with, and I, actually, I think it's in a lot of people, but actually often in business, it doesn't come out of this question of purpose, right? So um, often if I'm starting with execs and we don't talk about purpose, at some stage it comes out, right? Because they're getting frustrated or, or bored in their role and they want to like do something meaningful and you know they've got enough money uh, or whatever it is. Um, so, but I think there are people who actually know that they want to be on a bit of a mission and create a positive impact, right? So, um, so yeah, ideally it's like, yeah, somebody who's you know in the tech sector understands how tech is going to change, but is changing everything in our world and wants to shape that, right? And leave a legacy. Nice. I love that. I love that. Initially, I love the intersection of strategy and people, especially in the tech world, they get strategy. They don't often get people. Um, mm. They might get how to uh, help people to, to, to buy their product, but understanding the people in the organization is often where they can struggle. And, and yeah. but then you put purpose on top of strategy and people that, that little uh, uh, Venn diagram is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I just see it more and more actually that um, once you get through the first level of work with people, they're like, yeah, okay, now, you know, what's actually going to light me up, right? This is all good stuff. And I'm kind of, I'm the, got the buzz of, achievement but what's going to light me up in this role it doesn't mean changing role necessarily right but it means actually being a mission-driven leader in that in that situation nice i love that i love that so where do these people who love complexity hang out what do they read what magazines do they like to look at well the answer is if i knew that i'd (laughs) i'd be uh, well you do know that because you're one of them so yeah. if there was a conference going on that you could get tickets to, where would, where would you like to go to? Yeah. Um, well, there's, um, um, I 
Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm actually thinking it's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to pause you because you don't yeah. have to have the answer in this moment, but that's the direction to go in. Hmm. What, what would, if you were going to make a list of 10 amazing conferences you could go to next year, if budget money was no, no, mm. no object, where, where would you love to go? They could be in Paris or France, wherever you, you are right now. They could be in Europe. Yeah. They could be around. Yeah, the world. Anywhere, yeah. Anywhere, yeah. Um, what, would you love to go to Singularity University? You know, there are yeah. some, right. So yeah, so, I mean, that was one that came to mind, right? I mean, and then, so, yeah, but it's, it's also interesting because there's also a thing, I think sometimes people are actually, there's two dimensions. They either go that way, right? And we like really go for all these events. And so I think sometimes they just like do the opposite and they just like want to go and go and play tennis at the weekends, right? And get out of their, their heads, right? So I think there's probably two. Well, tell me more about you. Which one, which one do you prefer to do? Do you, do you like to just switch off completely or do you like to immerse yourself in... Because I'm not quite your, your person, but I'm similar. Mm. I do. I mean, I love simplicity on the other side of complexity. That's my, my sweet spot. But mm. I'm fascinated by complexity. I'm always reading, always learning. And, and that, so yeah. w- w- what do you do when, you're, when it's time to... Do you switch off completely? Do you, do you go to conferences? Would you like to go yeah. to conferences? Um, I think I'd like to go to more. It's probably a thing I haven't perhaps done so much of i've done a lot of like business building conferences and these kind of things right but it's not necessarily what my clients are doing um so perhaps just going to things just because they're interesting um rather than because they're necessarily inherently useful if that makes sense yeah and i would do a little bit of market research with your clients hey mm. out of out of the the year that's just gone do you mm. go to any conferences what magazines do you read what books do you read in the year ahead yeah. is there any conferences you want to go to do a little bit of research, not just with your current clients, past clients too. Just reach out and say, hey, I was, I'm curious. Mm. And see, are there any patterns? Are there any main conferences? The most fun thing I think about conferences that people sometimes miss, and I know I shared with this with you once before, but for everyone who's listening, uh, find the kind of environments and conferences your clients love to go to. And you don't even have to book a ticket because the most interesting people at most conferences are the ones sitting in the reception area while the talks are going on. Because in my experience, the really high performers go along because they're interested and quickly realize they've got this, uh, there's too much of a sales pitch going on, or they just want to meet interesting people. And it's actually sitting outside in reception that you have all the interesting conversations. Hmm. Yeah, I did that, right? You, you told me I that and that. I, yeah. I, um, I did do that, yeah. And I got some good conversations going. Um, but I think sometimes conferences aren't all, I mean, conferences, you say everyone's like, everyone's kind of there and often it can feel like it's a pitch fest. Like everybody's there trying to push their business card on you and everything else, right? You don't necessarily want to be that person either. Well, no, don't, don't, don't. It's the prosperous yeah. coach approach, right? It's yeah. interesting conversations. Hey, what's going, why are you outside? Uh, why aren't you in the talk? Tell me more about that. What, what's going on? What, what, mm. Tell me, these are two great questions. What's, what's the big challenge you're working on for the next 20 years? And what's the big challenge you're working on for the next three months? They really get people talking in interesting ways. And that's what you want to start a conversation. Because at some point they say, well, what are you up to? And then you can say, well, you know what? The thing that excites me the most right now is I work with mission-driven leaders. What I've seen is that most leaders work on strategy. The ones who are really successful work at the intersection of strategy and people but there's a group of people beyond that who once they've had a lot of success, they realize what's missing is purpose. And so I work with leaders who understand people, understand strategy, have had a lot of success and want a bigger mission. Now you've got an interesting conversation because your people will go, oh, that's me, or tell me more. If they're not your people, they'll go, oh, that's nice. That's not your people. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's... um... Yeah, I think perhaps it's an experimentation of of finding those 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 rooms, right? And 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 perhaps just trying out a bit more. Again, I have this filter which is like, is this going to be a good use of my day, right? And everything else, because I could do all these other things, right? I could ring up all these people, or I could write all that, whatever it is, or and so, so, so this often is that can limit me. Slow it down, slow it down, because this is the, the on Colby where yeah. you're low on follow through. You're like planning it all out now, and it feels overwhelming. What if it was once a quarter, you went to an interesting conference. 
Find mm. four the next year. That's it. If after the first one you're energized, you might pick another one for the calendar. But if you're not, it's just one next quarter. Try four yeah. next year. That's it. Make sure your assistant books all the accommodation <laughs> and flights so you don't have to. And, and show up and have some interesting conversations. Mm. But the mission isn't to enroll a single client at a single intensive or a single conference. It's over yeah. the entire year. Let's have a look back in the end of the year and see how was that? The worst that will happen, you've been to four interesting conferences. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah it's manageable. So okay. for those of you who are listening, there was a moment, I didn't want to interrupt Richard, but there was a moment when he, he said a few moments ago and he went, oh. it, was more like, it was more like this. It was, mm. And that was the moment. That's the sound of insight. Then he went into his head to write, trying to plan it out and it felt overwhelming. So we had to talk it back a little bit. But it was that moment of realizing, oh, yeah, I could do this and it could be interesting. And I wonder what that would look like. That was the insight moment the planning and stuff will work out we, we can do that or make sure you don't do that so someone is doing it for you but and the simplicity of just one a quarter will make it easy but for those of you listening at that moment i felt it it was the hmm when the insight came yeah and i think this distinction that just came to my mind was around you know interesting versus useful right and actually if you're kind of trying to do things that are useful then it's probably going to be a pitch fest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas if it's things which are interesting, then people are there because it's interesting. Yeah. Um, which is actually more, which is, which is more interesting and, and a more fun place to be, right? And, and totally. have those conversations. Totally. totally. And I would even think, you know, we mentioned Singularity University was the first one that came to mind. Do they have a group of people who are members who are in France or just in Europe? Or London or wherever, yeah. Yeah. What if you create a group of people like, I'm going to create a group who, who are members of Singularity University and, and want to have a meetup just to talk about complex issues. And here's the first one I'm going to put out for us to talk about. Here's why I do this. Because I work with leaders who work in fast moving, complex industries. It's what I love. And what I discovered is that those kind of people don't have much of a chance to, to just connect with others at that level because they're just too busy running their business or they want to switch off completely. Mm. You want to have some fun talking about complex issues and have a laugh. Here's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. I can see that. It is. Slow it down. One tiny step at a time, make it easy. Not a lot of follow through for you. And there's some ways to both create community and find community and then actually do the two together. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Rich. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching. It was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.